Hello there, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for being here open to receive on Greatest You Summit. Greatest You Summit provides wisdom for the soul to get you living your greatest life. I am Christine Williams, your hostess. Today's guest is Jillian Tracy, and her topic is Cultivating Resilience in Our Changing Times. We are living through a time of unprecedented change and transformation on many levels on our planet. Energetically, this means that new, highly variable electromagnetic signals are being emitted and received by our Earth. These electromagnetic energies affect all life upon our planet and impact our evolution as a species. Although these energies can be experienced as expansive and accelerate awakening, they can also be very hard on our nervous system when our brain is not attuned to them. This can cause a variety of health issues such as inflammation, low immune function, chronic fatigue, mental dysfunction and digestive orders. Jeline is a vibrational gen- geneticist who channels light-coded sound vibrations to create shifts in the energetic, emotional, and physical elements of the body. Working with multidimensional life beings, she identifies areas of imbalance, disease, and disharmony in the body and channels specific tones to address each one. Jeline has studied several healing modalities, such as Reiki, Theta Healing, Shamanism, and Body Talk. Her sessions are inspired by these practices, and she uses aspects of each when appropriate to offer the highest potential for healing and change. Beautiful beings of love and light, join me to warmly welcome Jillian Tracy. Jillian, welcome. It's your first time. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Christine, for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. Okay, thank you. And dear listeners, before we get started, please remember to receive Jillian's gift. It can be found just above the Q&A box and in the newsletters. All right, dear Jillian, what is vibrational genetics and how did you get started with this modality? Okay, um, great question. So vibrational genetics is the modality that I developed over years of studying different energy techniques, as well as through the connections I began making with guidance through the study of those different techniques. So on my own awakening and healing journey, I began to study different healing techniques really first for myself to heal myself and to understand how I how I work and (laughs) what drives my thought patterns and where do my fears come from and where do my emotional responses come from and so I really dove into trying to understand all those aspects of myself and along the way I would study different healing modalities in order to figure that out Um, And as I did that, I began releasing and opening my own karmic density, my own energetic density. And as I did that, I began to connect to guidance, specifically with a group of guides called the Mantis Beings, the Mantis Collective, um, who live within and reside within the Earth's dimensional energetic field. And these benevolent beings uh, began to work with me during client sessions, once I began to see clients, to help guide me and um, teach me what was going on in their bodies. They are genetic masters, and I have a background um, through school in molecular biology, and then I spent years working in the biotechnology industry in the United States, and so I had a background in genetics and uh, epigenetics and understanding genomics and how to uh, do cloning experiments and DNA sequencing. All of this was part of my world before I began this whole uh, endeavor into understanding myself better and learning these healing techniques. 
So I had that scientific background. So when I began to study different healing techniques, I always tried to bring it back to the science to bridge the metaphysical with the science. Well, these beings I was connecting to were giving me a lot of information about the genetics of the body and everything else. And it was while working with them that they also began teaching me how to use sound. And so the term vibrational genetics was developed or was chosen by me because it represents what these beings and I as a collaboration bring forward when I'm working with groups or with individuals in a healing session. And that is the use of sound and vibration and light to shift and alter uh, DNA codes and the controllers of DNA, cellular communication, um, discordant energies that are stuck in the energy fields, and um, different emotional or past life traumas, which I actually can call concurrent life traumas because everything's happening in the now. Um, but all of these different aspects of healing and release through the physical structure and through the energetic structure, um, through the use of sound and toning is where that name came from, vibrational genetics. Very, very, um, very good. <laughs> uh, Jeline, how can hmm. we interpret, interact, and thrive in today's electromagnetic environment? Well, what's going on on the planet right now, and a lot of people are talking about this, but what's going on on the planet right now is that there are lots and lots of um, chaotic energy signatures. And we see that in the way that our geopolitical climate is shifting. We see that in catastrophic climat, climat, um, climate, excuse me, climate events such as wildfires that are burning um, in the Caribbean. We see it even in uh, places like California where we've had unprecedented unprecedentedly bad uh, wildfire seasons here as well. Flood, we see lots of intense weather patterns. Um, and so we are in the crux of change and whether that change was man-made or whether it's a natural cycle of the planet to be warming and then a combination and a acceleration through what man is doing with the greenhouse gases. Um, how it, Wherever it comes from, we understand that we recognize that we're in a time of change on the planet um, the way that people are interacting with each other, the use of technology, all of these things are shifting and changing the way not only we interact with each other, but the way we interact with ourselves. So all of this is uh, has an effect on the uh, global consciousness of humankind. And that global consciousness, is the collective consciousness, creates an energy signature that we're all immersed in and we're all tapped into. Additionally, the Earth has its own electromagnetic Earth signature, energy signature, and that is constantly being emitted from the Earth. And as the Earth evolves and changes and shifts, so do we in response to that. We are designed as electromagnetic sensing organisms. We truly are the device, if you think of it. We all hold these cell phones in our hands and treat them as the superb amazing device, but truly the human being is unsurpassed in its amazing ability to sense into its environment and to respond to that environment. When we are in a state of unawareness or when we're in a state of responding unconsciously, it is only because we have lost that knowledge and that ability to truly feel into and understand our environment. But like all animals and plants that do this regularly, um, we are meant to be interacting with and responding to our environment all the time. So the more we can do to really understand our electromagnetic environment and respond accordingly and respond appropriately, the better we fare, the better our health is, the better our nervous system responds, and the better um, our health is. So. It's uh, really important that we understand and get to know our electromagnetic environment and that we become active participants in observing it and understanding what's there and then working with the energies around us. But how do we do that, Jeline? How do we so in, navigate? 
Yeah. So it's a, it's sort of a, a long answer <laughs> because um, the ways that we do it and the way that we thrive in this electromagnetic environment is we have to, like I said, start to really feel into that environment. Meaning um, when you are going throughout your day, a lot of times we have a lot of unconscious ways of shutting down uh, emotional inputs and shutting down uh, electrical inputs that are coming in. For example, you are at work and you run into a coworker that you don't like very much. So what you have a tendency probably to do is to avoid, to move away from, to shut out energetically. You might have ways of shielding yourself energetically. But what I would argue is that what you really want to do is you want to remove all resistance between you and anything around you, and you want to let all energies flow through you without judgment and without assigning value. When you assign value to anything in your field, then it becomes a matter of a need for categorization in your brain. So as your brain receives inputs and stimuli from its environment, it's categorizing everything based on those values that it knows that you have for those things. So here you see Joe at work. You don't like Joe very much. You see him and immediately your body tenses up a little bit. You energy field goes into resistance. You're shutting down. You're either putting shields up. You're holding tension in your body. That resistance and tension you're holding in your body creates a response, a cascade of neurotransmitter responses of stress which then hampers your immune system and your digestion. And so instead, we want to flow through our environment in a state of neutrality. We want to understand what's there. This is not about putting the head in the sound and pretending like there's nothing out there that we don't want to mess with, but it is about consciously observing, witnessing, understanding, and being neutral with everything around you. Because the only way that something of a low vibration can truly stick to you is if you have assigned it value and you become engaged with it in some way, either out of fear of it or out of attraction to it. So are we going towards things or are we going away? Neither. That's not what we want to do. We want to be in a state of neutrality at all times. So energy flows through you. And so you're not expending energy trying to avoid things or trying to seek them and run after them. So this is the first and foremost, the most important thing to thrive in our environment. It is to remain in a state of neutrality at all times. And this does take practice, but it is certainly work worth the endeavor. Because once you start to do it little by little and you start to bring yourself into a state of neutrality, you start to catch yourself assigning value to things and letting go of that assignment and coming back into a state of peace, and I'll give you a little exercise to do, but um, through that process of returning yourself to neutrality over and over again, it starts to become more of a habit, and then you start to have less stressful responses to things in your field, and then your body starts to participate, and it starts to get into better health because your nervous system isn't on red alert all the time. So that's really number one. So how can we get into a state of neutrality? First of all, we recognize when we're assigning value to things and we stop doing that. And we realize that all is an emanation and a reflection of source energy. There is nothing outside source energy. All is source energy. And as such, the values that we've placed upon things and towards things is all about our own experience. And it's coming from our own lens of perception. So once we remember that, we remember that what I think is bad might be good for someone else. So really, there is no judgment that can be placed that is true and right. And this even applies to um, people who have behaved really badly on this planet because it's not so much that we forgive them or that we want to um, forget what they've done or allow what they've done, all energy will be worked out in time. But it does, we, we don't have to participate and move towards that thing, but we don't also have to put our energy in trying to avoid it. So this is my point here, that we want to stop assigning these values. And so, again, first thing you want to do is really consciously observe your environment and notice your reaction, reactions and responses to things. 
when you have a strong reaction to something, you can start to understand where that comes from. Why do I respond to Joe that way? What is it about him that triggers me and puts me into a state of anger or fear? What was it? What was the first thing that he did that triggered me? Why don't I like him? Start to explore those things. Start to travel down to the roots of those situations and understand what it is about it. Oh, maybe Joe is the kind of person that talks all the time and never lets me be heard. Why does that bother me? Because when I'm not heard, I don't feel like I matter. Why do I care? Because I'm scared that I don't matter and that I don't belong, that I'm nothing. And then you understand where that comes from and you can start to rationalize with yourself and know that you do matter, that you also are an expression of source energy and therefore always matter, all matters. So these are the kinds of explorations that I'm talking about doing and there are many to be done. Um, So this is where meditation and this is where um, calming yourself and moving back from your brain where you have all your stories and all your valuations and definitions and moving into the heart is really important. So anytime that you can move from the head to the heart, you're going to help yourself to make a choice and a decision about what's in front of you from your soul energy, from your higher self. So to move into your heart, you very simply start thinking about something that brings you into peace and joy, something you have gratitude for, something that you care about, someone that you care about, a beautiful comment someone made towards you, something that makes you happy, makes you smile, and place yourself in that thought and allow that feeling to expand in your chest. And then before you know it, you're out of that spiral or that loop of thought pattern where you were triggering your stress response. So I talk about this a lot because it's really important that we start reducing stress in the body. And really one of the biggest ways to thrive in this stressful environment we find ourselves in is to start learning techniques and tools for lowering your body stress response. And putting yourself in neutrality to your environment is one of the biggest ways to do it that I've found because it really brings you into the driver's seat of participation in your world and in your life. And it gets you out of the victimhood and out of that place of feeling overwhelmed and helpless and unable and incapable of helping yourself and keeping yourself healthy. Hmm. Jeline? Remember, I told you 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 are very thorough. That was a beautiful answer, very thorough. Okay. (laughs) Can you (laughs) explain how toning and sound can initiate healing in the physical, emotional, and spiritual bodies? Absolutely. So, like I said, when I was studying these different healing modalities, one in particular, Body Talk, the, the the guides came in, the Mantis Collective came in, and they started teaching me how to use sound to shift DNA and cells. And the reason is that because sound is very gentle and because we are vibration into form. We are sound and light that is vibrated into physical form. Our soul energy flows from our oversoul through our higher self and into physical form through this vibration of light and sound. And so it makes sense that sound would be the way that we begin to tonify our whole body to come into resonance with our own song, with our own sound that heals us. Toning specifically helps because when you tone, you're using your vocal cords and your vocal cords are very close to your vagus nerve in your body. Your vagus nerve innervates all the way from your brain down to every organ in your body, much of your musculature, and especially your whole enteric system. So that's all of your intestines, your whole gut, and your stomach. So this is why when you are in a stressful situation, you might feel an immediate flutter of butterflies in your belly. You might get a stomach ache. You might even have to go to the bathroom. That's all because of that vagus nerve that is tuned right in to your gut. So when you tone, you bring in signals of peace and relaxation 
and stimulation of the right kind into your whole body. It tells your brain that all is okay. It tells your gut that all is okay. It tells your heart that all is okay. It helps to lower and manage blood pressure. It helps digestion. It helps with your brain. It helps open up the function and the use of your pineal gland. So it's really beneficial on a number of different physical levels. And as far as how it connects you to your emotions, it can really help you release if you're dealing with difficult emotions, whether it's grief, whether it's anger, whether it's sadness. When you tone, it's like you give all that energy a place to go. It comes up and it goes out and it's allowed to be free. It doesn't get stuck in the body anymore. It moves through the body. As far as your spirit goes, it moves with the tone that you came into form in. When you tone and naturally allow yourself to tone in whatever wants to come out of your mouth spontaneously, it'll be different depending on what kind of mood you're in or what kind of space you're in. But whatever wants to come out is the tone, your home note. This is basically your vibration. This is where you are in this moment. And as you tone and sing your song and allow it to come out of you, you bring yourself into congruence with your higher self. And you bring yourself into that space where you are open, where you are singing from your heart, where you're allowing yourself to be one with your higher self. You know, Jeleen, we had last week, Friday, someone came in and spoke about toning. So you are talking mm-hmm. about toning as well. So I hope the listeners understand the, the importance of toning. If you did not get it Friday, you're getting it again today. So, Jeleen, who are the multidimensional beings you work with other than the mantis? Yeah. Right. So I work with several different collectives. It's partially dependent upon whom I'm working with, because if I'm working with a client that has a strong connection to a particular um, angelic guide, then that angelic guide often will come in. Um, But for my work that I do where I'm channeling, often I'm working with different ascended masters. Uh, I work with Kuan Yin. I work with uh, my own angelic team. I also work with um, the Arcturians because um, much of my DNA lineage comes from this group, as well as another group called the Divinians. Um, So the Arcturians have taught me a lot about the way we manifest into form as light beings vibrating through sound and into form. And they talk a lot about the way that we hold light is very important. It's not just that... We are all light beings, but it's the way that we we uh, encapsulate, it's the way that we embody that light that has uh, a big impact on the way we present ourselves. And then the Davidians uh, speak much about neuroplasticity, and which is basically the evolution and the continuation of forming new neurons and new neural connections in the brain. And they talk about this because they themselves are beings that are now in a 13th dimensional state and and no longer in form. They're formless. But they have shown me what their bodies look like when they were in form. And they had very large heads. And metaphorically speaking, I think they showed themselves to me this way to help me understand that it is a misnomer that the brain is ever supposed to stop growing or making new neural connections and um, that our brain would ever start to shut down, that really it's quite to the contrary, that our brain should be continuing to make new connections and grow and become even larger and to uh, help us to um, reach much higher years in lifetime, you know, up to from 100 to 200 years, um, that we really should be living longer and that we should be living with much sharper brain activity based on creating more neuroplasticity in the brain with some of the techniques that they have offered. Jeline, you mentioned calling in the light, calling light into the body. There's much focus on that. 
how do our bodies cope with a lot of light? Do they, uh, our bodies hold a certain quantum of light or what are your thoughts on that? That's a really good question. I I think it has everything to do with where you are, um, electromagnetically speaking, in your perception. Because we are light beings and we are constantly in inundation with light and energy around us because light is just another form of energy, yes? And so everything is energy and yourself as an energy being is interacting with the energy field around you. So whether we call it energy as light or energy as sound or energy just as pure vibration, uh, it's all energy. And the way that you interpret and hold energy, as the Arcturians talk about, has everything to do with how uh, calm your system is, how well your nervous system. See, this nervous system can become very ravaged from overuse or from sometimes I've seen people who do a lot of uh, channeling or a lot of energy work that they're spending so much time out of their body traveling through different dimensional layers. And perhaps some of your listeners are of this sort that you do lots and lots of different energy work and you are exploring and you're out there in the astral planes. That can sometimes create um, a um, sort of like friction in the human uh, nervous system. And it can create stress, meaning it creates inflammation and it can create pain in the body. Um, And so what I like to do is to help people neutralize or balance the way that their body physically is running light through it versus the way that it has been doing in an unconscious way. So it's really all about being conscious about energy flowing through you and about participating in your energy field. And knowing that if you're doing astral travel or you're doing lots of different energy work, that you have to take some time to allow your system and run energy through you. I always like to connect into the earth and allow the earth to be um, sort of the conduit or the grounding rod. So if I'm running a lot of light energy through me, I'm always doing it connected to the earth. Every meditation I start, I connect to the earth first. And for that for the very purposes that human being is made up from elements from the earth. We're part of the earth. She's our ancestor. We are in collaboration to form our physical being with the earth because we are energetic light beings that have come to experience physicality on this planet. In order to do so, we get the contribution of her elements and her molecules in order to form ourselves. And so it's through that collaboration that we come into form. And because of that, we're really meant to have a strong energetic relationship with Earth. And when we're out of that energetic relationship or when we're not paying attention to it or not doing it on a regular basis, our body can get really out of whack and we don't hold light properly. We don't hold energy properly. So it's really important to constantly ground to the planet, send her love, pull her energy up through your body, keep that open line of communication with the Earth. And that really helps quite a bit. So, Jeline, why? How can we keep our pituitary gland working optimally? Mm, that's a great question because the pituitary gland is a really important organ in the brain that works in conjunction with the hypothalamus and the amygdala as well as the pineal gland. So, the pituitary, if you have heard of it, if you're unaware, it's Sometimes they call it the master controller of our endocrine system, of our hormone system. And in the pituitary is where we have lots of different hormones that are secreted to um, make their way to different organs in the body. It's either to our reproductive organs or it's to different endocrine glands in the body. And endocrine glands in the body are our thyroid. Uh, ovaries, gonads, um, they are our adrenals, uh, the spleen, um, the thymus. So there's all kinds of different endocrine glands around the body that are affected by the function of the pituitary gland and the signals that are received from the pituitary gland. So taking care of this part of our body is really important. And we do that um, through, uh, again, I'm going to, I feel like a broken record, but 
stress really inhibits the function of the pituitary gland because just above the pituitary is the uh, hypothalamus. And in the hypothalamus, we have many hormones and neurotransmitters that are secreted that interact with the pituitary to um, alter its function. So everything in the hypothalamus, which is in the limbic brain, um, from metabolism and weight gain and satiation signals in the body to uh, thirst and controlling fluid retention um, to management of your uh, pituitary and all of that endocrines and all of the hormones that control your reproductive cycle. Um, the list goes on and on to all, really most importantly, all your stress hormones. So when you get a signal of stress because you're in a stressful situation, um, the neurotransmitters that come out of the hypothalamus tell the pituitary to send out that signal of stress, and then it goes to your adrenal glands, and the cortisol comes up, the epinephrine comes up. So it's a really important part of our brain's function and our whole endocrine system. And what about the pineal gland? Why should we so have pineal- it activated? So the pineal mm-hmm. gland is really interesting because it um, interacts with the hypothalamus and it really is sort of the controller of the controllers. The pineal is where we, it's also known as the third eye, right? Because even though it's deep within our brain, somehow ancient uh, humans and um, beings knew that there was a direct line of communication between the pineal and um, our sight, our inner sight, right? It's our perception, it's our intuition. And the pineal is a really interesting gland in the body because it has these really fascinating cells in it called piezoelectric cells. These cells are actually light-dependent or light-stimulated, even though it's deep, deep within the brain, and you would think that those cells are never going to see the light of day. But, in fact, we still have these cells in there. So the other thing that is secreted out of the pineal is melatonin. And melatonin you probably know about as the sleep aid. It's that... Um, hormone that helps us sleep. So melatonin sends signals to the um, hypothalamus to send signals to the rest of the body that it's time to sleep. But when we don't have enough melatonin or it gets blocked from cortisol, which is that stress hormone, then our sleep can be disrupted. So it's very important for health and longevity and for immune function that we have that good balance of cortisol to uh, melatonin. And uh, melatonin is a really amazing, um, uh, what's the word, Um, it uh, detoxifies. It is a really great way of um, protecting cells and keeping the body healthy. Um, It has this regenerative effect as we sleep. It also, the pineal produces and releases something called pinaline, and the derivatives of pinaline are dimethyltryptamine, which everyone might know as DMT in the spirit molecule. It also has a derivative that are benzodiazepines, which are relaxants. It's the same relaxant that they put into Valium, for example. So the pineal is really responsible for keeping us feeling connected to ourselves as spirit, having a human experience. It's very connected to us remaining calm and keeping ourselves with communication into our prefrontal cortex in the brain where we can rationalize stressful events and understand that they're not dire and they're not life-threatening. And so it's a really, really important gland. And then with the melatonin that comes out of it, it's that rejuvenation factor while we sleep. And it upregulates growth hormone, which also rejuvenates us while we sleep. So um, we want to activate it and we want to keep it clean so that all these functions that affect so many different systems around the body are functioning well. And um, what many of us may not understand is that the pineal gland, because it's on the outside of the blood-brain barrier, is very susceptible to calcification. And calcification occurs when we have heavy metals in the body, when we have too much uh, calcium carbonate in the body, when we um, use fluoride toothpaste for a long time or have fluoride in the water. Um, it causes a calcification, so a literal crystallization of this gland. And when it is in that state, it doesn't function well. And so a lot of times with people with calcified 
pineal gland, not only is it harder to connect, it's harder to see metaphys- in the metaphysical world. It's very difficult to feel connected and maintain that connection. Um, but it can be also difficult to sleep and maintain good sleep cycles, and it can be difficult to feel rested when you wake up. So uh, there's lots of different effects, but really from our energetic perspective, we want to keep ourselves in that connected state, recognizing, viscerally feeling ourselves as spirit having this human experience. Okay, so would you like to give us a little activation? Yeah, that would be wonderful. Sure, sure. We can do um, a short meditation and a tonal activation of your pineal. Uh, I think that would be wonderful. Um, Mm -hmm. And what we'll be doing in this um, will be to um, basically open up and begin that decalcification process of the pineal I just want to say there's other techniques and ways of doing that. Um, Things like cilantro help remove heavy metals from the brain. Um, Apple cider vinegar is used for a short period of time. Um, A tablespoon in the morning with honey and water is great to help decalcify the brain. Um, Just don't do it for too long because it's not great for the microbiome. But, yeah, there's different things you can do. Lemon water, all these things are good at decalcifying and opening up. And we'll give an energetic opening and clearing of the pineal and connection into all of your brain, helping the communication between all the different brain centers. So if everyone would like to, you can get yourself into a comfortable position and take some nice deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And as you breathe, feel yourself Drop into your physical body, knowing that it's a safe place to be. And feel yourself relax and for your muscles to release. Feel your limbs get heavy. And feel yourself just sink in to the chair or onto the bed you're on. Totally relax. And then start to imagine roots flowing downward from your body. And they flow down through the floor, all the way down to the earth below you. When they meet the earth, they spread out and begin traveling downward through the many layers of soil and sand, water. And they flow effortlessly through all these different layers of the earth, flowing, moving downward, gaining in speed, and eventually coming to earth's crystalline core and connecting into this beautiful energy grid of hers, glowing golden light. And they wrap themselves into this grid and connect deeply with the earth's energy. Connecting into this energy of the earth, immediately your body begins to balance and harmonize to her earth energy, knowing that she's your true ancestor. Every cell of your body begins to hum with her resonance and her healing energy. We send her peace and gratitude and appreciation for all that she provides us. And she responds by sending up a beautiful ball of light up through your roots. And as you inhale, this beautiful ball of light begins traveling up through those roots and close to your body moving and flowing swiftly up. As it reaches your body, you may invite this light in and allow it to merge with all of your cells, with all of your muscles and tissues, all of your organs. It fills you all the way from toe to head, bringing your whole system into harmony, every cell in your body. Cradled in Earth's energy, 
We now bring our focus and attention to deep within our brain, right through the center. The Mantis Collective bring in a beautiful beam of green light that flows right through the center of your forehead and shines right into the back of your brain where your pineal is located. It lights up this gland. It opens it. It cleans it. It brings it into its full potential to enable you to experience yourself as a beautiful divine light being having this human experience moment by moment, always in the now. Take a nice deep breath. potential to flow uninhibited, allowing your nervous system to come into a state of peace and calm, witnessing itself and others in their pure divine state, in a place of neutrality and joy. Thank you. Oh, wow, Jillian, that was so powerful. I felt the tuning in my head. I felt the vibration in my head. You know, mm. so probably so my I, my my pineal gland did get activated. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, well, there are very many many beings helping with that transmission, and so uh, mm. it's wonderful that you can feel it. Good. Yeah, effective. Oh. You know, Jillian, why is there some who meditate so easily and for others, their minds are all over the place and just can't meditate? Mm. 
Well, there's lots of different factors, but oftentimes we have gotten trained, our brains have gotten trained to be easily distracted and to be doing, we all have so many things on our plate right now. We feel that we must have, you know, five balls in the air at all times to accomplish everything we need to accomplish in our day. And often we don't take those moments to just breathe and to pause and to do an activity that would actually be a good precursor to meditation. So if we've had a busy day and then we just try and sit down and start meditating, it's really hard to get the brain to relax, right? Um, I find what's better is to go out into nature and to get some exercise first and to kind of calm myself down because I have one of those really active brains, monkey mind, as some people call it. Um, Mm -hmm. So I I find that um, because of that, if I go do something active first and I get the blood flowing, the lymph flowing in my body, I get my energy and I tune myself to nature because I'm out in nature. I think that part's very important. Um, I always start, like I said, with connecting to the earth. That seems to balance and anchor my energy really well so that the rest of my meditation goes well. And then the other thing that I really like for people who have active brains is to do the type of meditation that involves visualization, such as the one we just did. You were watching your roots go down. You were bringing the energy up from the earth. Then you were thinking about the light coming into your pineal. That's all visualization. It gives your brain something to do while the rest of you is relaxing and the rest of you is getting connected. So I think that's a really good tip also for people who have very active brains is to use a meditation app or or to connect with some kind of meditation that helps you go through a story or a process because that's a really great way. And it's not like you get any less effect from it. In fact, I would say the effects are heightened. Would you like to tell us about the microbiomes, what they are, and what is the best diet for them? Yeah, sure. So I'm a big uh, fan and big proponent of talking about the microbiome. Um, As um, you may know, if you've (laughs) listened to anything I've I've said out there in the public, um, and that's because, well, partially because I know how important it is, but uh, I also worked at a microbiome research company for a few years um, before I left biotech, and I began to understand and read the research papers about why it's so important. And what many of us, and I certainly didn't know before I worked there, was that our bodies are made up of over 50% microbes, meaning different types of bacteria and viruses and yeast and fungus and molds and protozoas and all these different things. Um, And so because we're over 50% microbe, we co-evolved with these microbes, and they inhabit a huge part of our body, and they are responsible for everything from our digestion to our immune training and function to the way we promote and produce neurotransmitters to our hormones. I mean, they're really involved in basically every facet of our existence because I really like to think of human beings as just very highly evolved bacteria because once upon a time on this planet, there only were bacteria, right? So we are just incredibly highly evolved microbes turned inside out, right, to have the skin on the outside. So um, because of that, it behooves us that we need to learn how to live and coexist with these microbes that are in our body in a really mutualistic, beneficial way. And these particular microbes come in all different sorts. There's thousands and thousands of different species of microbes. Um, They've sequenced the microbiome, which is a collection of all these microbes in your body. And what they find is that there's maybe 30,000 different species of bacteria alone, not to mention all the other things that I mentioned. And so because of that, um, we're just sort of scratching the surface of understanding how all these different species survive in the gut. And in your intestines, especially in your large intestine, where you have the biggest bolus of a variety and diversity of microbes, um, that's where a lot of the magic happens in the body with immune function and regulation and with production of different helpful neurotransmitters like serotonin and GABA. These are the happy hormones, right, the peace and wellness hormones. Um, and so your, because your microbiome is responsible for producing so many of these things and for sequestering nutrients from your food and for um, processing vitamins and making them available to us, 
um, without the microbiome, really, we're done, right? <laughs> it's very easy to to um, quickly extinguish if our microbiome's not happy. So um, there's lots of different things we can do to um, create diversity, which is really the name of the game with microbiome. We want lots and lots of diversity, and we want to keep the good guys happy on the playground, and we want to keep the ones that aren't so good at playing with the others on the playground. We want to keep them off, <laughs> off in low numbers <clears throat> and keep the good guys in the high numbers. It's pretty simple. So there's lots of things we can eat. We can eat fermented foods. We can eat a really high fiber diet. I'd say number one is to eat a diet that's really high in fiber and of all kinds of fibers. So we want to eat things like resistant starches. Those are the types of fibrous foods that get all the way down to our colon and feed those oh-so-important microbes there that create those short-chain fatty acids that create all the good neurotransmitters for us and, and manage our immune system so well. Um, things that are helpful as well are, are obviously fruits and vegetables and simple um, but healthy ancient-type grains that are not over-processed. Food that's not overprocessed, food that is super healthy and organic, not laden with heavy metals, obviously, not laden with toxins, not laden with mysterious chemicals that we can't even pronounce. That's not what your microbiome wants. Your microbiome wants simple, whole, homegrown, if possible, food. So gardening is a wonderful way to support your microbiome because when you garden, you get your hands in the soil, so you get expo exposed to some of these really great soil microbes that are really good at helping to rebuild the lining of the gut. Um, then the food that you grow in that soil, um, and when you don't use pesticides and other things like that, and it's healthy, um, those vegetables, fruits and vegetables are going to have those soil microorganisms on their surface. And then if you just rinse them lightly, but don't scrub them too much, then you get to get the benefit of those right from there. It's the best kind of probiotic pill you could ever take is just to eat vegetables that you grow yourself. Not only are you connecting to the earth when you're doing that, you're getting exposed to the soil and you're growing things with the soil on it. So that's 100% a great thing to do. And then, again, like I said, all those good, healthy, high-fiber foods are really good. Prebiotics are great. Um, the list goes on and on, but really the main thing to do is to support your digestion with a really good, diverse um palette of fruits and vegetables and you don't have to be vegan if you want to eat some meat just make fruits and vegetables and um, healthy grains your main course and make the meat a small part of it so meat is okay as long as you're not having too much of it all the time and it's not your main thing that you're eating um, you really need more fiber moving through your system to feed those microbes to keep them happy so that's sort of my soapbox <laughs> talk mm. about the microbiome. But I cannot stress how important it is for you to get to know it and understand what it likes to eat and bring in those healthy, nutritive foods for it to keep yourself healthy. Okay. So, Jolene, let's take a look mm -hmm. at your special offer. It's called Cultivating Resilience with Jolene. Mm -hmm. So the link to his special Offer is greatestusummit.com forward slash Jalene. That is spelled J-E-I-L-E-N-E. -E. And if you're on the webcast, the link is just above the Q&A box. Jalene, would you like to explain us your special offer and how it can benefit anyone listening? Oh. Sure, I'd love to. Um, so in the offer, I developed tones specifically um, for this topic of cultivating resilience. Um, so there is a meditation and tone specific for stress reduction and lowering stress in the body that you can listen to over and over again to help you bring your body back into balance and reduce stress. Another one is an immune system boost. And this is really important because this uh, fall and winter, there's going to be a lot of flu and there's going to be a lot of colds going around. Um, a bit more than usual this season because of all of the sort of frost up energy that we've got going on around us. Um, and also just because we've had a lot of crazy weather. The crazy weather really stirs things up. It stirs up the mud. It stirs up everything. And so there's just a lot of microorganisms in the air that we haven't been exposed to in a long time. And so you really want to boost your immune system and take care of it with healthy healing foods, um, with things like oregano oil and vitamin C, 
garlic, elderberry. You want to do things to boost your immune system, and these tones are specifically de- designed to help that as well. Um, then the last set is a meditation and tones to balance your energy to your environment. So I talked about bring yourself into a state of neutrality in your environment so that you're not constantly triggered and getting put into that stress response. Well, this meditation and tones is designed to help you to balance yourself to your environment. Uh, And then I wanted to include a private session with me because the work that I do with the guides is really uh, wonderful when it's tailored to an individual because we look at the entire individual's body, physical body, all organs, all systems of function, immune, stress, um, nervous system, um, everything, digestive system, and work specifically with different elements and DNA and cell communication and make specific changes working with the tones that are specifically channeled for that individual. So I wanted to bring this as part of the package so you could get um, the opportunity to work with me at a discounted price um, to experience the tones specifically for you and to also get a full um, scan of your body to understand what's going on and where you need to shift things with diet, with exercise, with nutrition, with um, energy work, with different components of your emotional field or with your energetic field. So that's what I do in the, in the individual session. Um, And then there's also item number three is a two month subscription to the light vibes network that I produce each month uh, with my team. And this is, um, an effort with all of the different um, collectives that I work with. So I post new, fresh channeled material each month, as well as written material and resource material that has all kinds of information to support you in your health and well-being. Um, Everything from scientific information and the latest research and different things that you can use to help bring you into balance and metaphysical or channeled energetic information as well for my guides. So it's a combination of both bringing and bridging both the scientific and the metaphysical world together. So there's a two-month subscription to that. There's all kinds of tones there that you can download. There's all kinds of channel material, um, lots and lots of information there. And so you'll have access to that as well. Okay, so the link to Jillian's special offer is greatestyoussummit.com forward slash Jillian. Jillian, I see there are hands up, but who would like to speak with you? Are you ready to take callers? Sure. All right. Alexandra. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yes, you are first online. Oh, my goodness. Hi. How are you? Um. I'm going through some interesting, um, like, transformation. Like, uh, I thought I was awakened, like, 10 years ago, and then 20 years ago, since the harmony conversion, and then every, this last, um, all the eclipses and the whole July, uh, something, uh, I have gone under so much transformation, and it wasn't, it wasn't funny. It wasn't nice at all. Like the whole right. July it was a, a total roller coaster nightmare thing. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. with the, uh, I had a lot of animals die and born. Like there's a lot of birthdays over there and my wedding anniversary day, and which I figured out it was on the day of the Egyptian New Year. Mm-hmm. And I. And of course, my husband and I had this huge Egyptian um, past life, and um, so it was it was huge. And I never knew this before. I never knew that I got married exactly on the day of the Egyptian New Year that they always had the right. It was at the start. I had what, no idea. What would you like? I, yeah. <laughs> what would you like then, to know? What is your um, question? What I'd like to know is um, if you see anything for me that I'm, like, really ready to go into the world and do stuff, and uh, I have a little voice in the back of my head that I really 
I want to get rid of that last little bitty bitty voice that reminds me of a past me that is not who I am now, like totally releasing past mentalities that um that I inherited from my parents, like they were very narcissistic mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and abusive, and uh the school was very abusive i mean i i'm yeah. So I was a very abused okay. child, and it's very hard to go be very powerful in the world when you think that you're mm-hmm. a piece of little dirt. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. nobody. Wants. Mm-hmm. I want to. Okay, I so know that so forever. Okay, so what I'm picking up from your energy field is that um, you still have a lot of fear that you're resonating with in bringing forward your your gifts and your contribution to humanity. And that fear doesn't actually come from these experiences you've had in this lifetime. It comes from another past lifetime. It comes from other experiences you've had, not in that Egyptian realm, but in another past life where you were, um, or again, I, I always say concurrent life, so in in another lifetime or another expression of your soul where you were thwarted from bringing forward your knowledge and your gifts, and not even so much in the metaphysical realm, but really in the uh, fact that you were, um, you were male and you were sidelined and you were pushed down and people didn't listen to you and people didn't give you uh, credence and people didn't trust your opinions. And and it is through this um, sidelining and this feeling that your voice doesn't have uh, weight and that it doesn't matter to people that you have this fear of moving forward into the world to present yourself in this way. And so what um, we need to remember is that um, those experiences, while we resonate with them for different purposes and different reasons, in order to help release the energy of that other timeline uh, through the opportunity we have right now, because right now we're on the time of a planet when uh, there is open invitation to release energetic density that's in our field. And it doesn't just come from this particular lifetime, this timeline. It comes from other timelines as, as well. And that open invitation through you because you're resonating in congruence with that other lifetime through your um, thwarting of who you are. So in this lifetime, you had a resonance with that other lifetime because as a child, you were treated as one whom didn't matter, right? You said this. Yeah. So because of Uh, that, it it, it resonates. Unwanted burden, unwanted, unlovable. Right. Yeah. Right. So it resonates. And it's not that when I said that this lifetime wasn't keeping you from doing what you're doing, um, I don't mean to say that all those experiences don't mean anything. Of course, they do. And they do make it difficult. But you've done a lot of work already to move through a lot of that karmic density from your young life here. But what happens is that you've also got karmic densities coming in through these um this other portal from this other life expression of yours and it's what it's doing is it's asking you for relief it's begging you it's saying please uh recognize me please recognize that this aspect of your energy field is still present and together you and this other aspect of yourself can release can recognize and release and neutralize that energy so that it stops driving your current perception your current reality And the way I like to do these releases, well, in in session, I would do a release with my guides and with um, pulling the energy through and sending it down into the earth. But because we're not in that situation right now, you can yourself recognize that this energy is wanting to flow through you and give it voice and give give it sound and allow it to flow through you and down into the earth. Ask the earth to... um allow and absorb this information from you and allow you to release it and don't try and do it alone. Always, always use um, the energetic core that you come from, which is the earth. 
and allow it to flow through you and into the earth. And so it's about recognizing these unconscious drivers that are shifting our current reality and recognize that you do matter and that as an emanation of source, of course you matter and you do matter and your voice needs to be heard and that you have information and you have guidance and that that fear is only a function of your perception of what others think of you, but really there is nothing more important than what you think of yourself and that the compassion and the love you have for yourself. And when we resonate with our truth and resonate with the knowing that we are emanations of source energy or of God, then it immediately puts us into that place in the center of our heart where we resonate with the truth of our being and we have deep compassion for ourselves and we know that no matter what the outside world presents us, that we do matter and that we do have a voice to be heard and that we do have a message that will help others. And all you can do is every day just take one step forward in that knowing and in that knowledge and continue to bring your message forward for the benefit of others. Uh Uh-huh. Whoa. Thank you so much. Did I get Mm, You're welcome. Can you see each of if I'm poisoned or it's another issue? That is another, um, that's another lifetime. In this particular one, I'm looking at when you're male. Um, it doesn't look as though you were killed. It just looks, you were completely frustrated. It was a completely frustrating experience for you. Like over and over, you were passed up, didn't get the promotion, didn't get the, um, didn't get the, credentials, didn't get the accolades, didn't get the recognition, a lack of recognition. I would say the word that I'm I'm hearing, the phrase I'm hearing is lack of recognition, lack of recognition. Thank you so oh. much. Thank you, Christine. So Thank, you, oh. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, Alexandra. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, so Vaslava is is on the webcast and she has a written in question. She's asking, do you see any issues that I should work on? Okay, can you please tell me her name again? Vislava from Vancouver. Mm -hmm. I'll spell her name for you. W-I-E-S-L-A-W-A. Okay. With Lavla? Okay. Yes. With the W. Okay. So short answer is yes. <laughs> um, so let me step into your energy a bit here for a moment. So I'm feeling some grief coming from you and some grief and some sadness, and this is affecting other areas of your life. And it's shifting the way that you're interacting with other people and shifting your progress forward. So it would be easier if we were having a conversation (laughs) and you could give me some information about um, what it is you're trying to accomplish. It's a general question to say, do you see any issues for me? Um, But it definitely looks like you need to work through and release the grief that you're feeling. And also with other emotions that you have in your body, that feels like you're holding them in your body and you're not allowing them to be released. And so it's affecting the rest of your body. It's affecting your organs because you're maintaining and holding onto energy from emotions, those intense emotions. So as I said, Uh, anchor into the earth, send the earth love and gratitude, and ask her to release the density of your body and allow those emotions to flow through you. Give them a place to go. Don't sequester them. Don't hold on to them. Uh, Feel it like flowing through you like a river, like water flushing through you. Be more of uh, an open window and not a sponge. And as an empath, you want to allow things to just flow through you and flow through you easily. And you don't have to hold on to them. You don't have to get them stuck in your energy field. It's not your job to hold the energy for others. You just let it flow through you. Okay. Okay. Are you finished with her? 
Um, mm -hmm. Jillian. Yeah. Okay, Vishlava, thank you for your question. And we move back to the dialed in callers. Irene, you may speak with Jillian. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I came into this incarnation to do very specific things. And right now I feel very blocked and disconnected. And I have a great deal of issues that I'm dealing with that I also blocking me. Mm -hmm. Health issues? Uh, I have some health issues, yes, but there's also a lot of disturbance where I am living suddenly, and uh, um, I also have financial issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are you, Irene? I am in New York, in Lower Manhattan, by Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to understand how to unblock yourself and to open yourself back up again? Yes. And to clear clear the blocks? Yeah. So, Irene, what yes. I'm feeling from you is a lot. Sorry, yeah? Do you want to say something? No, go ahead, please. Yeah. Okay. What I'm feeling in your body, Irene, is uh, a very, how shall I say, it's like you've erected a... Um, all these thick metal walls around you and you've done it in order to protect yourself and you are still operating under the paradigm of putting up shields and protecting yourself and keeping things out but you've erected such sturdy energetic shields around you that not only is nothing getting in but nothing is getting out either you have stymied the flow of energy through your system it does put you into a state of stagnation and it does put you into a state of rigidity that you want to begin to soften and allow to flow. So begin by allowing yourself the freedom to move through your energetic field without fear, knowing that you are safe when you are in a state of acceptance and openness and neutrality. Know that you are safe. Know that you are free. You do not have to hide behind walls in order to keep yourself safe. To remove blocks, we release and let go of resistance that we hold within our energetic field because we create our own blocks. They always look to be the work of others around us. But in reality, they are a response to the way that we hold our energy within and the way that we interact with our energetic field. When we are erecting walls around us and keeping ourselves separate from the things around us, we put ourselves into an energetic lockdown. And so it becomes difficult to feel connected. It feels difficult to work with others when we're communicating on the other side of a wall. It is far easier and better for the body if when we are interacting with others that we do so from a place of openness and compassion and we're operating from our heart center and we're emitting a signal of compassion and love from our heart that shifts the energy dynamics in the field around us. The human heart is an incredibly strong emitter of electromagnetic signals. So you can literally shift the energy of a room through a strong current of electromagnetic energy from your heart. When you focus in on your heart chakra, your heart center, and you bring yourself into resonance by thinking about something that puts you into a space of gratitude and love, and then you expand that feeling outwards from the center of your heart and let it flow like a fountain into the space around you, you literally start shifting the energy fields of the people around you. You bring them into a place of softness. You put them into a place of non-defensiveness. When people come into your energy field and they run into the wall, they immediately behave in a more defensive manner. When people come yeah, into your I, energy I, I, field... And they flow, yeah, with that, then they shift and change their responses to you. 
Yeah, it, it, it has, uh, uh, whatever you're saying is really registered, and I was not aware of it, obviously, fully. Uh, I have been dealing with a lot of res- resentment, and I'm helpful to people, uh, and uh, I f- feel I have an open heart, and I don't understand why I have such heavy protection on me. Mm, it's um, it's from this perception that it's needed. It's from this. Um, it comes in from um, mostly, actually, from feels like mostly from this lifetime's experience that you need this protection and that uh, you're not necessarily safe unless you have it. So it's almost subconscious in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is subconscious in a way. It's it's like the way you're holding your energy field and resistance. So I can feel the resistance in your energy field. It it doesn't have like this really fluid, open feeling to it. And so mm-hmm. um, the more you spend time um, really just imagining a flow of light and compassion flowing from your heart and flowing out, it begins to disintegrate those walls and those some of those unconscious drivers of other people's responses to you. Yeah, because I know I have a lot of energy, a lot of energy, and I'm also strongly connected to Egypt with some past life, and uh, mm-hmm. um, I am really here to assist people with the major change that we're going through. And obviously, you're doing that, but I'm not even close to it. Well, you are. Know that you are. It doesn't matter, you know, that I'm that I'm out there talking about it. Maybe, and you're not. You're still shifting and changing the people around you everything everyone's doing is important there's no one person is more doing more than another you're doing a lot of important work just by intending to want to shift and change humanity in a peaceful and a um in in an expansive way so you can be really proactive by sending that uh, flow of love into humanity and it really does a lot to start shifting around you and, and in your city and and in the world itself, it's um, it's really wonderful to get out there and to talk about it but and to work with people one-on-one or in groups. And it's also mm-hmm. wonderful just to hold that intention. Every single person you interact with on the street, you can shift them energetically by yeah, allowing that flow to come about, from yeah. your heart. Yeah. yeah, give it a try. See how it, See how it shifts the responses of the people around you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So By the way, I wanted yeah. to wanted to tell you that your uh, demonstration uh, earlier, I felt such unbelievable lightness and uh, cleanliness around me when you were working with us. So thank oh, you for good. that. Also. Thank you so much. You're so, so welcome. You Thanks really for sharing that. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, dear. Thanks for Bye-bye. connecting. Okay. okay, thank you, Ivy. And we move back to the Q&A. Linda is saying, hello. I am wondering if there may be a connection to a chronic skin condition that began around the same time my city began installing the 5G cell towers. I am EM sensitive and I can feel the impact of this on my nervous system. How can we become mm-hmm. more resilient in light of this stronger radiation? Mm-hmm. That's a great question, Linda. Linda, it was, yes? Yes. So, Linda, thanks for your question. It's really pertinent right now because of all of the 5G going on. I want to tell you that while I do um, agree that 5G is really disruptive to Uh, cellular behavior and has a lot of deleterious effects. Um, I want to point out something about human beings. And I talked earlier about how many of our cells are microbial. And because of that, because we're over 50% microbial, we have some of the most highly adaptive organisms on the planet in our bodies. We ourselves are highly adaptive organisms because we're made up of these microbes. And microbes can withstand anything. They have been on this planet for millions and millions of years. And they've gone through all kinds of cataclysms and all kinds of energetic changes. Really every environment you can imagine, right? Every inhospitable possible environment. 
I bring this to your attention because 5G, absolutely no good for the human beings or the animals or the plants, but it is our perception and our response to that 5G, which is probably making the biggest impact on your physical body right now. So you are aware of the 5G getting installed or you found out about it soon. It was in your awareness and it created a response in your nervous system, that stress response, which immediately then inhibited the function of your microbiome, which is oftentimes, 90% of the time, responsible for skin reactions because you've got microbes all over your skin. Those microbes are constantly in communication with all of your stress responses in your nervous system. So as you're feeling the stress and the fear of what 5G means and how it's affecting you, you are having a nervous system response that's eliciting this skin reaction response, and that's really common. Now, is it possible that you're actually having a biochemical 5G response? Yes, it is. But to me, this feels more like 90% of it feels more like it's more of a nervous system response to the thought of the fact that there's 5G around you. So um, because of that, it's really important that you let go of that fear of the 5G in order to help your microbiome adapt to it as best it can. You see, your microbiome and your body and your own cells cannot adapt to this new electromagnetic condition that it finds itself in if it's in a state of stress. So it's really important that you calm your nervous system down and you let go of the fear of what the 5G is doing to you and you put yourself into the driver's seat and you initiate more of the adaptability of your cells and of your microbiome so that you can flow through these changes in your environment with more ease and grace. And so letting go of that fear, doing meditations to bring yourself into peace and calm I, I have lots of these um, meditations and tones available on my website and on the other site that I mentioned, the Light Vibe site. So you can access those there or you can find other stress relieving techniques, exercise, going in nature, meditating, toning. There's lots of different things we can do to bring ourselves back into peace and balance. But do those things. Don't let yourself get scared because you want to keep yourself in an adaptable ability. And that's um, that would be my advice for you, Linda. Thanks for your question. Okay, Linda, thank you for your question. And we move back to Randy. Randy, you may speak with Jaleen. Hello. Uh, it's, uh, it's really been an honor to be part of what we've done so far. Uh, Hi, thank Randy. Thank you for being here. Hello. Uh, I'm learning to go FQAD. And if you're not familiar with mm-hmm. that, is it's it's FQAD. It's uh, that's an acronym for uh, the FDA coming out finally after so many years of being sued horribly for lying that uh, fluoroquinolones have killed more than three thousand and and you know put people like me uh, into a state of near death and invalid in pain for uh, you know hundreds of thousands. FQAD. And, and this is the interesting part about that, and then I'll shift it, is that if you follow the information, it takes you to the, where it's, it, you know, it's obvious that we're all GMO already because of how much quinolones are given to our livestock. That's the sweet spot to follow the information, FQAD. Now, what I'm trying to do, I believe that I brought in, I did like a walk-in on myself, except it was this version of my own soul from the time when I'm well. I brought it in, overlaid it onto my soul now to try to heal my DNA. Now that I know what I'm doing, I invoked that for a while, and then, bam, it happened. Oop, there it is. What I'm trying to do now that I'm bringing my DNA back into balance from the damage of FQAD, or quinolones, uh, is get my mitochondria and my Schwann cells and my oligodendrocytes that make myelin to come back online and be born in balance. Uh, mm-hmm. That's the sweet spot that I'm asking for, mitochondria, Schwann cells. Uh, now that, mm-hmm. and where can you go? Where can you go from there? And thank you. I love you. Thanks for your question, Randy. Appreciate it. Um, so you are looking to upregulate the cellular activity of these. 
cells that are going to help rebuild your myelin sheath in your nervous system because of how much pain you have in your body. Is this correct? Yeah. Okay. So let me sit with this for a moment. Randy, it does feel like you have a lot of beings helping you um, oh, yeah. and that your processes of meditation and working specifically with your cells and talking to your cells really is working and that you are rebuilding um, your myelin sheath and that you are also bringing in, it looks like you are bringing in the correct omega-3s and 6s and 9s, everything you need to bring in to support that giving all the building blocks to your body that you need to bring in the um, constituents that those cells need to thrive. Um, I it doesn't feel like you nutrition. have anything. What's that? I understand pranic, you know, like pranic healing, mm-hmm. pranic nutrition. Yeah, wonderful. Like blessing our food, so, we can... It won't be that. Exactly. I was just about to say that you look like you are using energy um, as food, which is wonderful because when you um, eat less, you allow your body to rest and rejuvenate and to heal. And so as you do things like intermittent fasting or reduce your calorie intake, then you do bring your body into a state of readiness and ability to take care of itself and it really looks Randy like you're doing the right things for your body and you are bringing yourself back into that place of balance and that a lot of the experiences you've had have been part of you releasing old um, energetic density from other lifetimes Um, your own karmic debts and your own experiences we've both played every role and uh you know i i say we all i should say we've all played every role and you've been both uh, perpetrator and victim right and as have we all um and so a lot of the energy from those other experiences you agreed to come in and to clear in this lifetime randy and so you're going through that process you're doing everything you're supposed to you're open energetically you're Portals are open. You're allowing these energies to flow through. Remember to work with the earth too, Randy, and to allow the earth to help you and continue to help you throughout this process. A bird landed on my hat the other day. That's great. That's that's beautiful. Wonderful. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Randy, for sharing your story. That's my social network. Ask for wind. As the trees, as the plants. Yes, absolutely. Work, yeah, work with, because, you know, the the earth and the plants, they have, um, they have what you need when you'll need it. And so there'll be different stages of your healing journey when there might be a plant to help you. And if you tap into the earth and listen and connect, then you will get that kind of guidance and that information when you need it. This one advanced concept I'll share now. Move on to whoever's next to me. Uh, there, I read of this book, and it's the the Ringing Seers with Anastasia. And the concept that they presented was: if you wash your feet in water without soap, and you share that with your plants or your garden, or another way I get there is urination in, in, near a plant or a garden, then they know what you need, and it's you're in a symbiosis because of the signals they get from reading you know, the water from washing your feet or from uh, your urine. The, plant, the plants absolutely can, you know, and then to, to, to embrace that concept and that knowing it when you're laying hands on a tree, it's it's one of the things I see uh, the beauty uh, the reflecting. Mm-hmm. In. Yeah, that makes sense because um, plants, uh, and microbes and all animals and humans, we're constantly sensing into our environment and plants are using um, the soil, right, as their medium for communication and the air and the sunlight and the water as their medium for communication. So they're sampling their environment and they're responding in kind and they respond swiftly um, as do microorganisms and animals. It's humans who tend to respond slower because oftentimes our uh, perceptive abilities are clouded or jaded or shut down um, through systematic shutting down. But 
plants are a wonderful way of working with your environment and the earth. And so that's great that you're already doing that. Glad to hear it. And my new word of the day is altruism. Look it up. Be it. Thank you. Love you. Bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Thank you, Andy. We have a question on the Q&A from Denise. Denise is asking, can you tell me what I'm holding that makes me tired all the time? And could it be from another life? Mm, and where is Denise calling from? Or where is Denise, Denise send her is question from? San Angelo, Texas. Okay. Denise, it feels like you're holding on to fear, honey. It feels like you're um, very afraid, and that is very taxing on the nervous system. When we're in a state of fear, it's probably the hardest thing for the human body to tolerate for long periods of time. And um, it does feel like it's coming in from another one of your lifetimes. It does feel like it's coming in um from a lifetime in which you experienced uh, loss, what they're showing me, they're showing me a, a flood situation or rapid river flowing through, like a, um, not like a tsunami, but like you lived near water and there was a flood and your home was lost and your family was lost. And so it feels like everything's r easily ripped apart. Like everything that you've built could be ripped apart at any one given moment. And because of that, uh, you feel this sense of instability in things that you've created, and sometimes that instability that you feel in the things that you've created causes you to not even want to start anything at all. It, it, it can lock you down. It can put you into a state of doing no thing um, and fear. And, um, and so that is what is creating the um, sense of tiredness and fatigue in your body. Okay, so thank you, Denise, for your question. And we move back to Melissa, our final caller. Melissa, you may speak with Jillian. Oh, thank you, Christine. You're welcome. Hi, okay. Um, okay, Jillian, I would like... Uh, I I just have been contemplating of what is the... the trying to figure out what is the most important thing because I really am at that point. Um, I mean, I feel like I've been at that point, but okay. So what I would like is to figure out what it is and, and how I can release this. Well, I connected to what you just talked about with the fear, because I think that there is a fear from a past life probably multiple ones, about being, I think it's like just around being seen and speaking my truth, and I'm not sure, I, I used to do that, and I was very outspoken and spoke my truth. Um, I had four near-death experiences in this lifetime. I've had mystical experiences. I've been part of being a vehicle for some beautiful healings that I've witnessed and um, I want to I want to I want to you know I just want to be of service mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, I really do and I, I know that I am of service just with my energy, I know that I am with strangers every day because ever since I was a little child, I just have felt like my heart was always open and all I wanted to do was just like um, love, like just hold everybody in this incredible love and, you know, let them know what beautiful beings they are and what this experience here is really all about, which is not what everybody thinks it is, you know? 
I mean, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's based in my visions that I've had since a child. I've always felt so sad because there's so much competition and there's so much people, you know, just striving to get things that it's not really about that. It's about being and living and experiencing joy and the connection, the connection mm-hmm. and the communion between between earth and nature and each other. And that is, I want to help facilitate that. And yet there's this paralyzing, terrorizing fear of doing that. And I don't, um, I mean, you know I've been, what it is. No, okay. I, can I tell you what I'm picking up? You ready? Oh, please, yes, I am so ready to hear this. Okay, um, Melissa, uh, it's Melissa, right? Yes. What I'm feeling from you, Melissa, is that you have uh, a very intense fear of failure. You're so connected to source, to creator, to God, that you are feeling as though you want to get it just right. Sometimes it's a blessing and sometimes it's a curse to be so connected at such a young age because then you feel like I should understand the whole purview. I should understand everything. I should know how to do this. I should be the most excellent healer on the planet because look what I've been gifted. I've been gifted all of this perception, all of this knowing from such an early age. I know how people feel. I can feel into their bodies. I know what's wrong with them. I know how to help them. And so you hold yourself to this intensely high set of standards that you think are coming from God that you think that that is what you are held to, that that's who you have to be in order to be of service, that you have to be absolutely perfect and all-knowing and all-wonderful and that you aren't allowed to be a human being who is one who is going to have flaws and is going to make mistakes and isn't going to get everything right every single time and isn't always going to make all the right decisions. And so it's absolutely paralyzed you to move forward. And so really what this is about is about you starting to have the same self-compassion and self-love that you have so easily for all the other people around you. You're so good at sharing your love for others. You're just not so good at sharing it for yourself. You hold yourself to this ridiculously high bar and standard that isn't even humanly possible, nor does anybody keep score, keep tabs, or care, right? God is not watching you, wondering if you're doing right by your mission. All creator does is create, right? It's an energetic flow that flows through everything. It's from source. It flows, again, like a fountain. And you're part of that flowing fountain. And you may have an incredibly wide channel of flow of that water that comes from source and be able to flow that and share that through you in a really beautiful, energetically strong way. But that doesn't mean that anybody's judging how you do it or anybody cares how you do it. All that matters is that you share it. That's all that matters. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be in acceptance of yourself and of who you are. And every little bit about you, every part of you, the part that you like and the part that you hide, every part of you is good. Every part of you is source. Every part of you is worthy of your love. And that same beautiful compassion you gift to others on a regular basis. Well, you answered both questions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for You're so, so welcome, sweet Melissa. Oh. You have so much to give the world, so don't hide from yourself. Just let it, let, let, let yourself be, give yourself a break. You deserve it. You're wonderful. You're amazing. You're loved. You're cared for. You have so many beings around you and angels around you carrying you and holding you and ushering you through. But the crux of the matter is is that you can't do any of that until you start loving yourself in the same way that you love others. 
Right, and I do understand that because that was my other question: is why, you know, why can't I, you know, do that for myself, and why do I hold myself to mm-hmm. such words, and why is it because so- you think you think that you think that somebody's watching you and keeping score, you think that that's how it works that there's actually like a chip system, but there isn't. There's nobody keeping score. There's no. It's not like you're going to go up the evolutionary track by being a good girl this time. And it's not like you need to make up for anything you did last time when you were kind of a jerk. It doesn't work like that. It's Everything is experience. Everything is pure energy experiencing itself in form when we're on this plane of reality, right? Nobody's okay. keeping score. You only have this experience to play with, right? Right, and that's the truth that I share with other people, and it's just so amazing to me that that truth that I share with others, I can't, it's like there's some, something. Embody. That, yeah, to embody yes. itself is like, oh, wait a minute, you know, and if I, if I. Make, I know, you've got yourself outside of it. You've got yourself in this, in this space where you think that somehow you are outside of that love from God, yeah. from creator, that you are somehow outside of it. That, and and and, it, and the truth is that no one is outside of it. Every being, no matter how good they behave or bad they behave, is made up of the same stuff. Everybody is on the same playing field. Value is a human condition. Humans place value on things, and humans think, some people are good and some people are bad. Value is just part of this earth plane, illusional, delusional field of reality. There's really no value to anything. Everything just is energy. And everything is energy vibrating in different rates of right. frequency and, right? <laughs> I mean, it just, so, it, this is, this, I mean, you have really, you, this is the crux. I mean, this is the my deep core. This is it because. Yes. I don't know this truth. I, 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 you know, it's like for me and my son used to say to me, "Why do you even listen to these programs when you already know all these things and you've already been doing these things and you've been doing them for so long? Why are you just stuck listening and not getting out there and doing? And why do you think that there's something else you have to get before you can do that? And it's like." When he, when he crossed over, one of the things he said to me was, "Mom, everything you said is true," and I was like, "What? Mm-hmm. What did I say?" You know, I felt like really <laughs> that was funny. right. Then he was wait, like, wait, "What did I say? What, 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 what prophetic thing did I say?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know so, it. I know it. But here's the thing: is that you, for, you, for some reason you've got it in your head, you know, that somehow you don't get to experience all that stuff until you do a certain number of good things, until you get a certain number of chips on your chalkboard, right? You you don't get to have all the, the glory until you've done enough work, until you've done enough sort of retribution, until you've done enough um, reconciliation. And, 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 and so it's this mindset that you've gotten yourself unconsciously subconsciously I think rolled into and so it's going to take some reprogramming of your brain to recognize that that's actually not the case that's not actually reality it's not you know it uh cognitively you just don't know it viscerally right that's it okay and it's that whole thing of uh, I mean I can I viscerally and I embody the pain of not living that truth that I have helped other people understand and live. It's like, but you're right. It's this whole um, thing of getting myself entangled of having to, you know, like, yeah, I get it. I mean, I do yeah. get it. I, I mean, I guess really for me, so you have I, to start practice. You know what you have yeah. to start doing to retrain your brain? You have to actually, you have to associate action with thought pattern. So you have to just get out of your fear and you have to start working with some people again if you're not already doing that. You've got to start offering your – just sit down and do a reading for a friend. Just sit down and do some energy work on somebody. Amaze yourself. 
watch your, just get the feedback from your friends about how awesome you are and just slowly start expanding that, expanding that, and expanding that. And so that you start to get more and more of that validation that you're missing and that validation that brings you back into the knowing that you are absolutely worthy of all of these gifts, that you are absolutely worthy of working and helping other people, that there's nothing that you've ever done, will do, or can do that would put you outside of that. Okay. That was beautiful. Okay. So much. <laughs> I really, really thank you. And I, I needed to hear everything that you said, and I am – I am so grateful. I really, really am. That was very profound for me. And um, thank you for spending that time with me. I am so Oh, you're uh, welcome, Melissa. Thanks for calling in and connecting. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking my call, Christine. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Um, Jeline, Denise responded. Yes. She said, thank you. I was told that I didn't think it was fair to warn my family. And I carried betrayal afterwards. I knew what was going to happen, but I couldn't stop them. How do I clear this fear? I am a powerful healer in that life and could be in this one. I'm sorry. Can you tell me what she... I'm, I missed what you said right there you're oh the last part i'm a powerful healer in that life and could be no i missed one i missed denise denise who was in texas right we were talking yes about denise. It's correct mm-hmm. and she was the one that was in fear yes yes mm-hmm. and what was i missed and the she, first part of the question she said i was told that i didn't think it was fair to warn my family and i carried betrayal afterwards i knew what mm-hmm. was going to happen but i couldn't stop them how do mm-hmm. i clear this fear mm-hmm. of that that energetic lifetime so yes. um letting go of that feeling that she is somehow responsible and that any one human would be responsible in that way um that um everything that we do again is not being judged but we're all um, players in a very intricate play that members of her family during that lifetime were also part of that play and that they played a role. She was meant to have the experience of the one that experienced all those emotions of, of, of the betrayal and of the knowing and of the decision matrix that she had to go through. And the family members were those that were there to, um, to perish and to, be torn asunder so the the whole thing everyone played their role and everyone had um, their participation as they had prior to that coming into that lifetime that they had decided upon and so she has to let go of that attachment to feeling that responsibility and to the attachment to the guilt and to the betrayal and letting go of all of that and allowing that to become neutral and flow through her body. Oftentimes past life energy flows right through the back of the neck and in through the body. And so we want to allow it to flow through the back of the neck and not perturb our nervous system because that is where that vagus nerve is and that's where the brainstem is. Allow it to flow through us and into the earth and to be released and neutralized. And so that's what I would recommend to her or she can work with an energy healer to clear that past life um, by other means. Hmm. Well, that brings us to the final question, Jeline. Jeline, would you like to share any more before we end? And I want to thank you for your brilliance, sharing your brilliance and your loving, compassionate heart. Oh, thank you so much, Christine. It's been a pleasure to connect with everyone and with you, I really appreciate your questions and uh, for providing this um, show and this platform for everyone to connect in this way and continue getting this type of information out to the world. It's so important, and uh, I really appreciate you having me on. And thanks to everyone who listened tonight and called in and sent in questions. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful to connect with all of you, and the energy that you bring always elicits the response and creates the energy for that response. So thank you so much for participating. Okay. So thank you, everyone.
As well, thank you, Jaleen, of course. This could not have happened without you. So thank you so much. So thank you, everyone. And we meet again on Wednesday. So goodbye, everyone. Until then, enjoy the weekend. And goodbye. Goodbye. Take care, everyone. Okay.